Hello, welcome to Hit and Miss number three. It's getting good, isn't it? Um, yeah, we've uh, well, we've progressed a little bit, bits of on the painting and doing bits and bobs and things. Um, I'll show you those in a minute. But first of all, I want to try and answer a question that was put in the comments on Hit and Miss two by Dave. He wanted a little bit of help how I do skin tones. And uh, this is a very involved sort of subject, but uh, for all right for for the, for the purposes of a quick demonstration, this isn't a, a pro tip or anything. But he, you know, it it does does the business. I thought I'd show off a miniature. Obviously, you need miniature with with an awful lot of skin on it. Um, and this is it. This is this is what I've chose that we're going to have a have a go at. Um, he's only got a sort of loincloth arrangement on, but believe it or not, it's a Cyclops. This is the Citadel Cyclops. I think it's the only one they ever did. Um, and it's the same size. I mean, it's the most remarkable thing. It's the same size as um, a human. Cyclops are meant to be giants. Um, I don't know if you can, can see that there. I'll hold them up to the thing. Yeah, probably not. But, um, yeah, they are meant to be, you know, they are part of the race of giants. And yet this fellow's, all right, six foot, six foot two, probably. Um, which is not, you know, you know, he's not small, but he's not, not um, giant sized, is he? So, so, yeah, he's a bit of an anomaly, but he is showing quite a bit of flesh. And so this will serve as... A little bit of a help to Dave, perhaps some other people, of how or I, I get over flesh tones and 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 how I sort of sort of work them off. Um, Ninety percent of fantasy miniatures do seem to be Caucasian. Um, it's a trend that is slowly changing. I know Reaper have been doing quite a few more um, ethnic ethnic type miniatures. Um, and you know there needs to be more too. It, it's more inclusive for the hobby, and it's it's much better. And it's for us painters as well. It's much more challenging because all right, there's a whole range of skin tones. Reaper do cover an awful lot of those in their triad system. Uh, I think they've got more triads dedicated to the different skin tones and um, any other sets that they've got in there. And as I say, it's a vast topic and you can go into all sorts of things and, you know, the, the bigger the miniature or bust or whatever you do, the more more chance you've got of really sort of going to town on it. But on a 28mm chappy like this, we're going to keep it fairly simple, fairly straightforward. I'll show you how I do it and you can either agree or disagree or whatever you want to do. But this 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 is what I'm going to do. So we'll bring bring the light across. You might also notice he's he sat on a rather nice piece of um, wood there. That's a piece of ash that I've um, I've turned, and it's actually one of my painting handles. Well, it's the cap anyway. This is the painting handle. You can see see the magnet in the top there, and um, it's blank blank at that end. But you get a good good grip of the thing. You see see like that, and then this fits on top, just like that. And it's so good, you. Oh, that went well, didn't it? Ah, <laughs> oh, dear, you couldn't make it up, could you? Oh. <laughs> right. Well, that's down not to the magnet, but it's down to the bit of bit of grippy stuff that I put on it. Right. Let's try to get. <laughs> oh no! Never work with children or miniatures. There. There you see. He's dangling now. Honestly. I use a bit of bees putty to um, stick him on, and <laughs> it obviously, it obviously decided it wasn't going to do it. He's stuck now, you see. Honestly, you couldn't make it out. Right, so so there we go. So first off, stick him on his. Oh, he's fell off again. Get on there. Yeah. <laughs> going to go back to blue tape. <laughs> bees putty. Anyway, he's he's on there now, so so let's put him back on there. Pray for anything else goes wrong. Right. So first off, I like to go with skin tones, especially dark to light. And so what we want to do is start off with a fairly dark tone. I, I work on the premise that most of my hosts spend quite a bit of time outside, 
I mean, you know, this, this is a giant, supposedly, a very small giant, uh, uh, a pygmy giant, and uh, he's, um, all right, he's obviously living somewhere warm, he's not wearing a great deal, so he's he's going to be outside quite a lot of the time, therefore a bit tanned, and, you know, he's 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 um, going to be of a darker skin tone than anything else, really, if something's been inside all the time. I mean, I could show you something else was sit here um i've been having a go at um at uh, some of the other stock miniatures that we've been working on i mean there's the the uh little dwarven uh musician from bugman's things and as you can see he's he's got a little bit of skin i'll have to take some pictures of these and add them in um but that's there there's bilbo um he, he's coming along a bit but anyway I'm, I'm wittering away here get on Fitch get on do something Dave will be champing at the bit so put him on there what I start off with is Reaper um bronze skin uh 9260 which we can show there there we go and I use that as the base colour so what I'm going to do is base coat him now with this let it dry and then I will come back and we'll take the next part of the video and I'll show you where we go from there. Right, we'll see if anything else can go wrong. I'll see you in a bit. Cheerio! Hello, welcome back. Right, we've base coated the Cyclops, there he is, in, uh, in the uh, dark, dark skin shade. Now we're going to start adding some highlights. And to do that, we've got very faded label, but uh, 9047 Reaper Fair Skin from the Fair Skin Triad. Well, you can buy them separately. I sell them separately as well. It's quite a simple setup. You just unclog the the doobry, the dropper bottle. Now, where's me unclogger? I had it here a minute ago. It's one of the things with dropper bottles that you um you have to oh, I've lost the blessed thing. I perhaps it will squeeze out. Uh, I've got I've got a needle stuck in an old um, paintbrush handle, which is quite useful. Oh, there it is. It's coming out. That's good. So a couple of drops of that in there. Oh, the nozzle. And then you want to water it down with your drying retarder flow improver mixture. A couple of drops. Mix it around with mixing brush, which is just an old paintbrush, nothing, nothing too special. Plenty of uses for old paintbrushes. And there we go. And so and you can't see that, that's off camera, but I'll, I'll bring it up. Here we go. Oh, I'm trying to get it, I've, I've got it on my phone, there it is. But it's all mixed up in that well, so it, it's a fairly runny consistency paint. And because it's a light paint, it's not going to put up too much of a of a fight anyway. If you were going over with a darker paint, you'd want it a bit, a bit thinner still. So, very fine brush, give that a wet. Grab hold of said Cyclops on the painting handle. Uh, that you can buy from the store, just an, another little casual plug, and um, yeah, let's see if we get, it, get him in, in shot, hang on, move that a little bit, that's better, um, and then you start picking up the highlights, so you get a little bit on your brush, dab, dab a little bit off, because sometimes it will pull on the brush, and then look for the tops of the muscles and the areas where the skin will be stretched thinly over bone, and start to highlight remember highlights normally go at the top shadows will be further down sunlight if, if, if you're looking at the thing there it is there it is sunlight would sort of be coming from above in some direction from here from there or from there um and so that's the areas that are going to show all right most most light so that's basically the second stage you just keep Going round, because the paint is thin, you can build up layers. Um, a bit of a sort of pyramid arrangement. You start with a bottom layer that is quite broad. That dries a bit. You then go into a little bit that's a bit na narrower. Boom, boom, boom. And then you keep going up till you get to the very top. You can add as many layers as you want. And, yeah, that's pretty much it, really. It's not 
not um, not rocket science. It's certainly not not probably how the professionals do it. I don't know how they do it. I'm not a professional painter. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on wiring this leg. Where is it there? This one here. And I'll get that done. I'll leave this one. And then I'll show you the third stage. And, okay, you can then work out for yourself what it's worth doing. So I'll carry on with that for a bit. And uh, I'll see you on the next part, okay? Right, welcome back. I've done first set of highlights on the leg. I'll put in a, a picture, but hopefully you might be able to see a little bit on there. I don't know if I hold, hold it in. Sometimes it works. It'll come back here. That's it. Anyway, that's the first stage. So you've gone over high spots with a lighter colour. Now we want to sort of blend it all back in. And a quick way I found of doing that is with Citadel Colour Contrast Paint Dark Oath Flesh. I don't actually know if this is a, is a proper paint. Um, it's more of a stainy tint thing, but it's very useful, very useful. But in this instance, we're not going to use it as it comes out the pot. And Games Workshop's wretched pots, oh, blessed things, I don't like them a lot. But what we're going to do is, oh, let's, let's move him back on his pod, that's it, you get on there. Don't you fall off. That's all that's done while, while you've been here. He keeps falling off his, his bits of blessed, oh, I don't know what's on the base. Anyway, I'll show you what to do. There's your, there's your painting doobry, your little palette. So select a clean well, that's this one here. And using a brush, we'll put in just a little bit, not too much, of the Dark Oath Flesh Contrast Paint. And then, I mean, they call it a paint. You, you, I don't know if you can, can see that on there, but it's extremely thin stuff. I mean, you'd never actually paint anything with it. Then, a couple of drops of Flow Improver Retarder. Mix it round so it all goes. And you've got a very thin sort of brownie wash with a little bit of red in it, which just makes it look nice. And it's a simple matter, I'll put that back down here. Get back Cyclops. Oh, he's, he's hanging on, hanging on there. And carefully, you don't splosh it over, but carefully with a brush, not going too mad, you run it over the top. And what this does is it darkens the paint, but also it runs into the crevices, the folds, the where the muscles meet, and it starts to deepen deepen the little cracks and crevices as well, but makes it look fairly natural. And so we'll just do that all over. And then it's going to be, probably go back with another highlight of the same, and keep going backwards and forwards with this method until you get really where you're happy with it. So where the muscles look tall and alive the recesses are darker but not so dark as they look like they're were well, their brown lines it's it's a matter of of judging it but you just keep going backwards and forwards with this this little recipe and eventually you'll end up with something that's passable i would say it's fantastic there's probably an awful lot of better better things out there but I've, that's what, how, I, how I tend to do it. And so hopefully that will be helpful to Dave. Perhaps it's helpful to a few other people as well. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so there we go. I'll take a, take a picture of that. You can also um, deposit a little bit more of this mixture in the folds and bits and pieces. It'll settle itself out because it's contrast. And, um, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's quite helpful that way. It makes a very good tinted wash over all sorts of things, this stuff. Um, I was quite, quite pleased to come by it. I think army painter do 
do quite a few things. Um, contrast paints have gone a bit off the boil since they were launched. Um, everyone else has jumped on the bandwagon and, and had a go at some. But it's the only other advice I can say is you keep you keep worrying it. You keep doing a bit, coming back, doing a bit, coming back. And uh, eventually you will have a pretty good skin tone, I think. So what I shall do, I'll take a picture of this now it's got, got the, the liner on it. And then I shall carry on, complete the whole thing, and um, just the skin. And then you'll be able to see at the end of the video hopefully what it's like. And um, yeah... It's um, yeah, coming on quite well. Now, getting back to the original part of the video, the first part, well, saying, you know, he's such a diddy Cyclops, because um, he's, he's not really very big. I mean, there's there's the Dwarf Musician for, for comparison. I mean, you know, he's not particularly big. However, uh, this chap is. There he is. There, uh, you can see it. Oh, let's bring, bring it into shot feature. That's it. This is the Raoul Partha Cyclops um, from 1982. This is one's brand new. It's just come in from Raoul Partha Legacy. So thank you, Jacob, for that. Uh, he's brought a load of mates with him. I've got some other giants and, and things as well. But as you can see, you know, he's much more, much more substantial giant-like. Um, modelled um, by Tom Mir, I think, on the Ray Harry Hooson. Um, Sinbad one. Um, I think he did that in the fifties. I think uh, you know, but it's it's a marvelous figure, lovely little thing, and uh, yes, a a Cyclops that is a true giant, uh, and also has the the hoof feet, which um, Cyclops should have, along with Minotaurs. You see Minotaurs with with human feet, and it's not really right. I think they should always have hooves, but. Yeah, that's just personal preference. I've never actually met one. So I shall carry on and do these. Keep an eye out for the new stuff in the store. And keep an eye out for the new store. It is, it is being built. And I will, um, well, I'll see you on the next one. Cheerio!